Today marks one year since the October 7th Hamas terrorist attacks, and there's no clarity about how much further tensions will escalate in the region or how and will they'll end. Here to discuss this is Oakland University Professor Peter Trumbor. Can you tell us a little bit about where we stand now, a year later with this conflict? So uh, a year on, some of the, some of the worst fears that, that we had a year ago have started to appear to be closer to fruition. Um, the human toll of the, of the war is, is, is tragic. We are now at something like 42,000 Palestinians who've been killed, um, more than 1,200 Israelis, uh, most of those on October 7th of 2023, but certainly some since then. Um, and the war seems to be uh, escalating and spreading and becoming a more of a regional conflict. And that was the big fear that, uh, that folks had a year ago is, was the potential for this to become a more regionalized conflict bringing in more countries, bringing in more non-state groups like Hezbollah, like the Houthis in Yemen. Um, and now that Israel and, and, and Iran seem to be um, r rattling their sabers at each other, the potential for even greater escalation is, is present. Yeah, and it's already been catastrophic to say the least. So many lives have been impacted and this is the sort of thing that has such a far reaching impact right. even beyond this point. How do we even begin the process of rebuilding and moving on while it's still getting bad? Well, the, the rebuilding is simply can't happen until, until the missiles and the bombs stop falling and, and the, you know, the tanks stop shooting into buildings and things like that. Um, you know, international aid efforts have been hampered in, into Gaza. Um, the situation there is, is precarious for the population. Uh, something like 60% of Palestinian families in Gaza have lost a family member as a consequence of the fighting. And, and so there is that, that cost. Um, and so far there seems to be no, uh, no clear end in sight. The Israeli government has been so far uninterested in speaking seriously about ceasefire. Um, it's difficult to know how serious Hamas has been, but uh, by the same token, if there's going to be a solution, it's going to come at a negotiating table. I don't think this is a conflict that, that any side is going to be w able to win strictly on the battlefield. Does the U.S. getting more involved, would that make any difference when it comes to negotiating? Or what do you see as the U.S.'s role in the second year of this war? So the United States has the ability to place extreme pressure on the Israelis to come to the negotiating table if we chose to. Um, uh, Israel is a primary recipient of American military aid. And we could theoretically leverage that uh, as a way to try to, say, forcefully encourage them to, to get serious about negotiation. But there's no indication that we're willing to do that. Um, and at the same time, the, the Israelis are not in the business of asking permission when it comes to how they decide they want to prosecute their conflicts against, against their enemies and rivals. So uh, barring some sort of more direct intervention by the United States uh, beyond what we've been willing to do diplomatically so far, I don't see us having uh, a lot of a role there except for safeguarding Americans, helping to get Americans out of the region as necessary, uh, protecting American sort of vital interests and assets in the region. But, but beyond that, assisting in, the, assisting in the defense of Israel as we've done with sort of air defense, but I don't see the United States taking a more direct role on the ground. Yeah, and there's a lot of frustration for people on all sides of this issue. Are you surprised at all to see that we're having a bit of those aftershock moments like we just talked about, the vandalism and the graffiti and all of these things as people are just so polarized on these issues? This is an issue that has been a a political flashpoint for for quite some time you know the there is strong support for the Palestinian people and I think we need to make sure that we don't conflate support for the Palestinians with support for Hamas uh, those are two separate things Hamas is a terrorist organization that has engaged in in decades of really heinous behavior uh, against Israel and against those Israeli civilians um, but the Palestinian people uh, shouldn't be forgotten um, they have legitimate, um, uh, they have legitimate political gripes. They have a legitimate desire for independence. Um, the United States has long championed the idea of a two-state solution, a, a, a state for the Palestinians living in peace alongside an Israeli state. And so I, I think we need to, uh, it, I would like to say that we should try to tamp down the temperature of the political rhetoric but we seem to be unable to do that in this moment in this country. So, you know, the kinds of, of events that you just were reporting on uh, with uh, anti-Semitic graffiti and vandalism and things like that, uh, 
that does not have to accompany sh stands of solidarity with the suffering of the Palestinian people. Uh, those are really separate, ought to be, and, and, and frankly are separate issues. All right, thank you so much, Professor Peter Trumbull. We appreciate your insight. Happy to be here.